I, I think it's important that we um, have a little levity in our lives because everything seems pretty awful or not everything, but a lot of, uh, we have a lot of serious things happening in this country and in the world. And uh, as you may have heard, uh, Donald Trump is going through some things. Uh, all of his children are going to be testifying in his fraud trial. Things aren't going well for him in Fulton County, Georgia, thanks to the extraordinary Fonnie Willis, uh, who is flipping his co-defendants like pancakes. And um, yeah, I think we need to keep track of, of how many how bad Donald's days are going to be in in the near future um, by having a ketchup threat level. How many bottles of ketchup is he going to be throwing against the walls of Mar-a-Lago in the not too distant future? Uh, so buy some Heinz stock. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so wait, in full, full disclosure, the, the, this is not advice, uh, stock advice. Mary <laughs> Trump is not giving no. you stock advice. Yes, no. Totally kidding. I know absolutely nothing about stocks. So um, anyway, it, it, it's been too long. It's actually entirely down to me. I've been out of the loop for a bit, but uh, we are currently in a situation, uh, you know, you started this conversation by talking about the about anarchy and it feel things are feeling quite unmoored. Uh, we are in, in living in a time when a man who's been out of power for years now continues to exert massive amounts of authority in one of our two major political parties. And as you alluded to, I, you know, Donald actually has some uh, claim to getting Mike Johnson elevated to be second in line to the presidency and arguably to become the second most powerful political figure in America, not because he knew who Mike Johnson was, but because he adamantly refused to allow a Republican who voted to certify the 2020 election to be elected as Speaker of the House. I mean, just to think about how dystopian that sentence is right there. All right. So here's where I'm at. Uh, I sit on this on this on this incredible platform Monday through Friday, Sirius XM Urban View, where talk empowers and becomes action. I get to talk with some amazing people, most of whom are engaged politically. They read, they, you know, they they think deeply, they care uh, immensely about the state of our, our not just our union, our lives. And I don't really know what to tell them because a a former president who claimed that he won what he didn't, who actually helped foment an ex insurrection, right, is leading everyone, including a sitting president, Joe Biden, in the polls, can get convicted, probably will. I'm I'm betting he will go to jail. I'm not sure if prison, but right. I think he's going to definitely be convicted and go to jail, but he can still win from jail. Yep. And be president of the United States. I don't know what to say, you know, and people said, you know, you can't shame me into voting. Folk are disenfranchised by the Democrats. This conflict in Israel and what's going on in the Gaza Strip is not helping your picture with Netanyahu. Not helping. I don't know who's on the staff, but I would have never told this president to take a picture with Netanyahu with the climate that we currently have. And you need black people to show up and black people are not showing up this time. This is what I'm feeling. You needed black people last time. This time, black people are like, no, nah, y'all on your own without recognizing that how if America has a cold, we got whole full blown COVID. Or maybe it's just time. Maybe it's just time we find out if that's true. I don't know, Mary Trump. I don't know, Dr. Caritha Mitchell, if this, this is true, but this is where I am right now. And I don't know what to tell people. Yeah, it's. It's a very fraught situation, I think. Um, I agree with everything you just said. Uh, and yet, oddly, we're, we're living in a time where saying what you just said takes courage. Uh, you know, taking, uh, taking st literally being against the slaughter of innocence can, is a position that can be attacked or is this, is a, is a statement that some people believe requires qualification. Um, I think a, a fundamental reason we're here is because our, our system 
is is not broken. It's never been fixed. <laughs> the system, as you know, uh, is working in exactly as intended, um, but it needs to be updated. Actually, it needs to be leveled and reimagined. Um, it is not surprising that right now uh, the the major crises we're facing uh, are caused by powerful white men who continue to be protected by the very systems we exist within. Uh, so when when you have an armed insurrection insur against your own government and the government cannot police itself so that three years later, almost three years later, we have over 140 insurrectionists sitting in the House of Representatives, over 10 insurrectionists sitting in the Senate, participating in running our government. That is not sustainable uh, at all. The other problem we have is that Every election we we faced in the last three years has been the most important election of our lifetime. Not three years, sorry, since 2016. If we continue fighting our rear flank, we can never make the kinds of progress that are necessary in order to solve the problems. We never get to the point where we have enough of a majority or enough power where we can fix the Voting Rights Act, we can fix the Supreme Court, we can, and on and on and on and on, uh, in order to make this country a democracy, because it's not and it never has been. Can I jump in there? Um... Because one of the things that strikes me about what we're laying on the table is that none of the actions that Trump took were enough and remain to be insufficient to take away the influence. And it seems to me that part of the reason for that is because, as you said, when it comes to electoral college and so on, part of what we have is we have a system that is designed not to actually respond to the will of the people. But the other thing that's so disturbing to me about this, when I think about how long it is taking to have insurrectionists pay a cost, part of it is because anything toward progression uh, toward progressive ends, anything toward something like decency is actually under a lot of scrutiny. So that Merrick Garland, for example, is under a lot of scrutiny at the exact same time that GOP actors can have no, pre no pretense of decency, but they're not under scrutiny because the American people don't actually expect them to even be decent. So part of what I, I want to understand, the fact that I'm on here with you today is just kind of blowing my mind, honestly, because one of the things that I would love to know is how do we think about um, so many people who were surrounding Donald Trump throughout this process and only now coming out to suggest that maybe it wasn't a great idea how do we get to a point where those who have enabled so much actually take active um, steps to redress the harm, like not just make money off of selling books, but redress the harm? Because I think about watching his journey, think about the way that Questioning Obama was the beginning of his presidential ascendancy. Calling Mexicans rapists was another step to launch the presidential campaign. Making fun of the reporter with disabilities was another step. I think about all of the good and decent, quote unquote, people who sat by and didn't mobilize. And now when I watch people who are coming out with books like the woman who just cried on TV apologizing, when I think about them making money off the books, I have have to wonder at what point you do you actually try to undo the harm to all of the people who have been run roughshod over as Trump has had this ascendancy and as insurrectionists go unpunished. So I would love to know from you, Dr. Trump, um, how you think about that. Uh, yeah, it, it's horrifying. Uh, it's it's absolutely horrifying. And it it's related to what I was saying earlier about the system on the one hand working exactly as it's designed to work 
and the failures in a system that is incapable of policing itself. Uh, the media is a, the corporate media, excuse me, because uh, I consider this part of the mainstream media uh, where you are Thank in you. touch with the people who are the heart and soul of this country. Uh, corporate media, on the other hand, is not and has its own agenda, which is not the truth. Um, so the corporate media has failed democracy, um, if not its shareholders, uh, by doing exactly what you said, Dr. Mitchell. They've allowed people or they've taught people to believe that all of the horrible things about Donald, all about the horrible things about the Republican Party are baked in already. So what could you possibly expect of them? They're just who they are. They're how they are. So they get a pass. And we saw this play out in the race for Speaker of the House. Nobody ever said, nobody in the corporate media said, we just need five Republicans to join with the Democrats to choose a consensus candidate. It was all about... Mm. All 200 and I think it's 15, forgive me if I'm getting my numbers wrong, to all of the 215 Democrats needed to save the Republican candidate, even though that Republican candidate had betrayed them, had broken his his promises with uh, President Biden. And by the way, almost all of whom were, as we mentioned earlier, election deniers. So that puts... Uh, everybody at a disadvantage because it is not a level playing field. And although, don't get me wrong, I think there are plenty of voters out there to blame. A lot of them have been inundated with misinformation and disinformation and just, you know, don't know what's up. Uh, so it's a very complicated, tangled uh, environment we're living in politically, socially, et cetera. And it's going to take louder voices to drown out uh, the misinformation and disinformation. And that's sort of the, the struggle that we all in the mainstream media are facing right now. So we're here. I, I, um, nope. We're here. Our Urban View Channel 126, we're talking powers and becomes action with Dr. Caritha Mitchell. Dr. Mary Trump is here as well. The number is 866-801-8255. Uh, if you want to join us in conversation, I want to get back to the anarchy and to the possible coup. You you said Mike Johnson's ascension, because I keep hearing that word ascension. Is that a code word too? Ascension? Is ascension something? Is that is that demonic? Like what what is the yeah. ascension that they keep talking about? Mary Trump. And what do we do about a coup that we're living through right now? Yeah, I, I think it, uh, under normal circumstances, ascension is just a, a, is a completely reasonable word to use. But in this case, it's coded because this guy is an absolute nightmare. He is a, 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 a white evangelical religious fanatic who doesn't believe that any of the people on the screen right now have a right to exist, let alone have a right to have rights. I mean, yeah. he's just a, an unreconstructed throwback uh, to pre 18th. Well, that's a ridiculous thing to say. He's just an unreconstructed Southern racist. Um, so to use the word, I, I use the word ascension with, with uh, conscious irony. Um, because let's face it, he was an unaccomplished backbencher uh, who nobody had even heard of before, including the Republicans in his caucus. So he just sort of slid in there because of the ineptitude of McCarthy and the just the blatant vileness of Jim Jordan. So what do we do? Because I, I'm, I'm again, oh, yeah. we're, we're solutions oriented. You, I mean, you, I mean, you know, you can hide in plain sight, Mary Trump. You yeah. know, outside of being your last name's Trump, I guess you know, eventually they'll give you a pass. Maybe you can come back in if you want. If you just, just, just apologize. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Throw yourself on the mercy of the court. Caritha and I have a whole different. Like we can't go nowhere, right? We, okay. we, we look the way we look, and that's it, right? And I, th and I do think is is that that dire. As I'm yeah. watching images of Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia from the 1950s and what women look like 
in their business suits, in their pants, in their skirts, in their, you know, no hijab. And I'm not, you know, this is not about Islam at all. But women have freedoms. They could drive cars and run companies and, and work outside of the home. And now 2023, if you go to Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and all of these places, you, you see a different way in which women show up in the world. And you wonder, I wonder at least, it happens like that, right? Uh, there's a lot of talk about Nazi Germany in, in the wake of what's going on. It took maybe less than 10 years for some mm-hmm. for, for neighbors to turn into pogrom that allowed neighbors to then turn their neighbors in, take their neighbor's property, kill their neighbors, usher them into uh, trains, put them in concentration camps, gas and burn them. Like that didn't take but a few years. Do you know? So we're we're living while you said, you know, Trump, it's to me catching and the the rhetoric around it, all of the coded words that are now being spoken. I think it was Charlie Chris or something. What's his name? Charlie, some Charlie guy <laughs> posted something about the browning of America. Uh-huh. And he's I'll I'll find it. Charlie Kirk. Charlie Kirk. Uh yeah. and I'll find the quote when we come back. But I was like, oh, they're saying the quiet part out loud now. This is not even a, a secret anymore. Um and again, I, I want to arm our listeners, and it's not just about bearing arms and, you know, that's not going to be the solution. Like, there has to be a way forward, and I'm hearing a lot of people not voting, and I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah, I get it, too. I, I had a conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, and it was specifically about the situation in Israel and Palestine, but we could talk about it in the context of what's happening in this country. It is... Sorry, I was about to swear. Um, you can swear. This is the or no, this okay, is cool. a serious exam. Is you can drop the F on whatever you need to say. So fucking bad right now. It's it's hard not to swear. But it is a very shitty place to be when you are always you always feel like you're voting for the lesser of two evils. Uh, or because I don't think you know we can have problems with the Democrats for sure. I don't think they're evil in the way Republicans that it's just they're not in the same universe of things. However, it still is a terrible place to be when you feel like you have to vote for a party that still, after everything, doesn't recognize you, keeps telling you, just wait four more years. We'll get to your rights eventually. And that's part of what I was talking about earlier. By continuing to be fighting our rear flank, we're never looking ahead. We're always looking over our shoulders. So we can never get to the point where we have enough of a minor- majority or if we, we have enough political capital to do the work that's absolutely fundamentally necessary in order to get to the point where Black people don't have to keep questioning why they're voting for Democrats if nothing ever changes. And the problem is, and I know this is self-evident, but it needs to be said repeatedly, the problem is white people. White people who refuse to recognize their privilege, who refuse to recognize how dire the situation is for people, as you said, who can't uh, pass, if you will. You know, for people who can just get away with voting out of their own self-interest and not really worrying about what the people who have borne the brunt of the horrors in this country throughout its history, continuing to the present day, if they don't get over themselves, then they're going to find, as you said, as you alluded to, in the not too distant future, that they're gonna be in a similar boat. And they are going to regret their decision not to stand up. And it shouldn't take any courage, by the way. It it shouldn't take courage to do the right thing. Uh, And just concede that all is not fair, all is not equal. And there's only one way to make things fair and equal. And that's to make sure that everybody has the same um, access to the voting booth. Everybody has the same rights, freedoms, and responsibilities. And the fact that we're not only are we still not there, we're getting farther and farther away from that because of the radicalized, racist, um, evangel- white evangelical uh, strain of this fascist Republican Party. 
So one of the things that you've said that is resonating with me is you were emphasizing that um, corporate media had not come out to say something as basic as we only need five Republicans to come and do the right thing to have a speaker that would be decent. And that declaration is actually something that was said over and over again on Urban View, including by Karen Hunter. So that strikes me as your critique of corporate media. But one question I have is when you say that um, the system isn't policing itself, um, so that's separate from the corporate media, right? That's the, the political arm. So I wonder what would you say about what I presented earlier about Merrick Garland being so under scrutiny in ways that um, no one is putting the Republicans under scrutiny. In other words, it seemed to me that he was trying to do his job of having the system police, it, police itself, but yeah. there's so little wiggle room. And I wonder if you see that as partly about voters being brainwashed by corporate media or voters just leaning toward anything negative if it has to do with the Democrats? Yeah, um, I think just to start with your last point first, I think it's absolutely this this perception that's been created that Democrats always need to do the right thing and Republicans can do whatever they want, for sure. Um, but yes, it, it's a really good point. And I, I started to, to get to it. And I, I totally went off track because the two things are related. The ways in which Republicans get away without being scrutinized and then people on the Democratic side, like the Merrick Garland, get constantly blamed, criticized, et cetera. And I'm one of those people. I have criticized Merrick Garland. Um, I've given him credit where credit is due. But I also do think that part of the reason we're in the situation and we're in is because everything took so long, uh, you know, and, and again, I don't know what happens behind the scenes. Um, I think it's fair to say that this, this country was in a state of shock after January 6th. Um, I don't necessarily think that's an excuse for the head of the DOJ <laughs> uh, at all, quite honestly, but, but any misstep he would make would be used as fodder against him when Republicans have no standards. Yeah, I, he's in a no-win situation. There's no doubt about it because I, he does get a lot of heat from the left as well. And and quite honestly, there's no template for this, really. Um, I mean, there were some, um, you know, we did have some attempts, I guess. I, maybe that's too much credit after the Civil War to hold some people accountable, but that unraveled quite quickly. And, you know, it ended up with uh, the South actually winning the Civil War, uh, which is something everybody should acknowledge as, as historical fact at this point, uh, unless I guess you live in Florida. Um, so well, I'm, I'm uh, putting up a church finger. I don't think that the war ever ended. No, it didn't. You're absolutely, it never I, I feel like so no one so won. They, they won the first battle, let's put it that <laughs> right, way. Right. Right. And they, they won the next several battles as well. Uh, you know. Um, so I don't I don't know what the solution to that particular problem is, other than the DOJ needs to get a lot of wins on the board. Uh and then maybe through the the several prosecutions going on when we see when it comes out just how up to its neck uh senate republicans were senate representatives were we're going to see a massive push to hold them accountable as well because it, with the exception of donald there are no other political figures that i'm aware of that are in the group of defendants. And that is mind blowing to yes. me. Yes. And I'm smiling because accountability should have happened already to, you know, Dr. Caritha's point. Dr. Caritha yeah. Mitchell is here. Mary Trump is here as well. We're trying to suss out what how we move forward. I don't want to have these circular conversations. You know, we are always about finding a solution. It's really tough when you have no you talk about courage. Telling the truth shouldn't be a courageous thing. Doing the right thing shouldn't be courageous. Everybody in Congress should be held accountable. The 140 insurrectionists that are currently in the House of Representatives and the 10 that are in the Senate of the hundred should be held accountable. No one should be okay with that. The fact that Liz, Ch Liz Cheney, who is no angel, lost her entire career 
holding accountable the you know holding people accountable and that nothing has really come of this is the problem and it makes it really easy for people to overlook everything that Donald Trump is so i have no i've no um i'm not optimistic y'all that that anything good is going to come of this just because it's supposed to happen and i think we we have relied on fairy tales for far too long you know uh it's time for us to grow up and really see what is happening here which is that this this country has been broken from its inception, steeped in the blood of, of indigenous folk and then followed that by the blood of Africans and followed that by by the decimation of the Asian folk that you brought here to 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 build your railroad, uh, followed by laws that then codified all of that decimation. I'm watching um, a documentary about the land stolen from black folk after reconstruction 90 percent 90 percent of the land and it's still happening the airs of uh, stuff that's going on here it is so frustrating but we have to first start telling the truth and then holding people accountable and not giving up uh let's keep fighting <laughs> Says that she loves me. Isn't it lovely when the one who loves things is the one?